Good day everyone, thank you for joining me, Carol Lauren Clary, right here on Divine Human Empowerment Inspirational Talk on Global Conference Television. Today we have an amazing guest um, in studio and today we're talking about the importance of innovation. That will lead definitely to entrepreneurship, we will branch even more into leadership. So let me not waste any time to introduce my guest. Oh yes, he's a male by the way. So thank you so much, Mr. Nayo. Wow, what must I say? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you said it so perfectly. I always say that it's a wow with a K. So, so we're wowing wow. at the same time. You, we, know, we, you, you, you are wowing you, the yeah. presence of God's vessel, God's instrument. You know, Yanda that I will say. He's making me pray in tongues now. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but honestly, thank you so much for joining us here. And um, I know the show is going to be very impactful because in today's industry, the Indian, especially in the in, in innovation and entrepreneurship and leadership and all of that, there are many of those that wants to be somewhere in life and make something of themselves. Some don't know where to start. Some don't know who to contact or anything to start with something that they are passionate about. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let me bring someone that's in this innovation, the discovery of it, the importance of it, that's loving the importance of uh, innovation, that's in the entrepreneurial environment, and that's also in the leadership. So I would like you to introduce yourself and tell us more about your brands and what, we, we, you know, what, in, what made you get into the innovation section, what, what's, it, what's important about it to you? Firstly, as you've so succinctly put it, um, thank you for having me on your show. I think it's a great, great honor, and I'm 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 happy and, and I'm excited to Yay. be addressing your audiences because I know the people that take the time to actually um, watch this or make sure that they, you know, they follow up on mm -hmm. the guests that you are having are people who know what they want. Mm -hmm. Number one and who have come to a realization that I do not have all the solutions. I need to hear what other people need to share. So I appreciate them so much and their intelligence and their wisdom. So we praise God for that. Um, number two, I am Neo Guahu and um, born in Soweto, had a rich, rich, you know, up upbringing. Mm. Not rich in the sense of money, but in the sense of growing up in different places or parts of the country. Awesome. You know, so um, I am Mosoto, you know, when, when I speak, so Basoto, uh, when they come and they introduce themselves, you know, and so forth. So that's yes, me. <laughs> You know, however, the first language I ever learned how to speak was Chitsonga or oh, it's Shangali. Abshin. Abshin. Minjani. I fukile, minjani. I fukile, I know. <laughs> you know, and uh, this was as a result of my paternal grandmother mm. being remarried in the old Gazangulu, you know, that mm. northern part of. Limpopo, mm. you know, close to Giani, Giani and so forth. So, yeah, uh, so. that's, that's where the bloodline runs from. Oh, where from? Oh, oh, why am I not surprised? <laughs> so you know, um, my 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 toddler years or my baby and toddler years were spent there, and the first language I learned how to speak was that. Mm. And um, shortly after that, then moved to Soweto where fitting in was a big challenge because mm. back in those days there was a lot of segregation amongst black people oh, yes. you know there was a Tswana section there was a Sutu section there was a Zulu section and the, the Tsonga or, or, or the Shangan section was somewhere in Shawelo mm, mm. and there I was plonked with my maternal grandparents in the middle of Moletzani you know, almost deep Soweto, mm. kind of, and the, all the kids speak Soweto. I mean, they speak Sesotho, and then the next town, like the next section is a Zulu section, you know, an area called Zola. It was notorious at some point, you know. 
and uh, I had to now adapt in an environment where I couldn't speak so to and here I was speaking Shangani and you know um, if you were different you were mocked and so forth mm. and that largely explains a lot of my growing up in different parts um, at some point I stayed in Cullinan you know um, where they found the biggest diamond ever in South Africa so you've been you know you've been touching this, <laughs> these areas so but very odd areas that's you know? what I'm saying <laughs> you've, you've been you've been in these odd areas I'm listening to you mm. and I'm like wow so that was so an African community so you need to go to Sudan to understand us? Yes, but I speak a bit of South African. But you don't know what you said, you were saying that it's a bit of a mess. You know, and now I, I had to adapt to another culture. And, and now imagine in the dynamic of South Africa at that time where, you know, we are coming from a background that is so segregated, separation is the order of the day. And here I am, because of circumstances, I'm finding myself being plumped, plumped in, 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 in places where I don't fit in. Wow. And I had to quickly make peace with the fact that I don't fit in. Mm. And I had to quickly embrace not fitting in. And I had to appreciate the beauty that came with not always being in familiar territory, meaning mm. that... I was getting an opportunity to learn so many diverse aspects of this beautiful country that we have, you know, and years, years later, today I'm an entrepreneur, I run my own business, and all those relationships that I created, even when I was at Technicon Pretoria, which is where I did my software development awesome. qualification. You know, um, training as a software engineer and I, I was to la la. build systems and so forth. Even in that environment, I, I was now the one that was looking for environments that I was unfamiliar with. Mm. So when all the Sutus were clamoring together, the vendors were clamoring together, the Zulus and the Kossas, I was bouncing from culture to culture. So I made friends with the guys from Ghana guys from Rwanda, guys from Congo, guys from Botswana, vendors, suitors. So I was always make, mm. like, I was enjoying being in a mix, a beautiful poetry course, you know, of, one, of, like, of, of cultures. Of cultures, which is a good thing though, because um, not many get that opportunity to, to get in that diverse section and, and if we if we have to re, like move a little bit back from the your growing up, mm. little did you know that being in an, an environment that you don't know is setting you up for something greater, because they say that your success does not lie in your comfort zone; mm. it lies in a in a zone whereby you're not familiar with which 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 frustrates you. But in that frustration, it's like a grooming stage. So where you've been, where you felt like you don't fit in, it was a setup where you have to stand out. You know, for a very long time, it didn't feel like a setup. It felt like a setup for a downfall. <laughs> How but interesting enough, uh, today I'm realizing it was all a setup for a great comeback. Mm. You know, God was setting me up to set me off. And um, today I enjoy privileges very few people, mm. um, you know, will ever get to enjoy in this lifetime. And I'm not talking about uh, money. Mm. No, I'm talking about being able to have doors open up for you wow. that would otherwise require you to have a letter from the highest office in the world. Wow. You know, such spaces where you have, as a business in South Africa, not recognized or you think it is not recognized. You know how we always mm. think our work is not yes, in that they... big. And to have great companies, I mean, fifth biggest IT consulting company in India mm. saying, no, we want you, we want to work with you, we want a partnership with you, we trust you. 
to, to, to deliver on some of the major projects that we have. And looking back and saying, all these environments are requiring me to interact with, with different cultures. Mm. And now I look back at that multi-layered, multicultural uh, 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 situations that I always found myself in. And I'm always being able to tap into, <laughs> you know, mm. oh yes, I know this, oh, oh yes, I know how to handle myself mm. around um, this environment or around this culture. And, and so forth and so on. But more importantly is learning how to work with different people of mm. diverse backgrounds um, and to be able to accommodate them mm. and to inspire the best out of them. Mm. You know, so that has been my fortunate part in my life. Building up my business, Waididi. Um, now we are in our ninth year. And when I set out to build YDD, I was working very comfortably as a software engineer mm -hmm. for, for, for one of the big IT companies in South Africa called NetOne Applied Technologies. If um, you're familiar with uh, the grants system mm -hmm. that's been all over the news recently or in the last couple of months, CPS, Cash mm -hmm. Payment Solutions or something like that. Um, you know, I was part of the, the company and we, we, we were tasked with the responsibility of providing, what, um, banking solutions mm. to the unbanked. And if I felt very proud to have been part of a, a company that was also, you know, tasked with the responsibility of developing a system mm. that would pay the grants of South Africa and has been doing that successfully for years until such a time where God said to me, all right, now that you have applied your trade in, you know, assisting young people or building systems that would enable a lot of people to access grants, mm. I need you now to leave this place to go and build a generation that will not need grants. Because they, 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 they depend on that. They depend so on that um, what I've discovered in today's society, which is for me a little bit sad though, because they depend so on it that it doesn't activate them to go and do beyond their imagination, beyond their capabilities that that is screaming with inside them. They are so depending on it that they don't even listen to the screaming inside them that wants to come out and say, hey, I am here, I want to do more, I want to give birth to something different, I am, I am willing to, to, to stretch but now you are cringing what's screaming inside because you are so comfortable on that. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that um, YDE was, um, was branched into a show as well on YFM. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love that. Like, I have to say, I was, I, was, I was interviewed, I think, more about twice on that show. Yeah. And it's a, an amazing platform, as Neo explained that. It's an amazing platform for young people to expose their brands to speak about them because an opportunity it's a platform for young people to literally because if everyone hears YFM they all go boom but then the significance behind the content of YTE was amazing so please tell us more about that because I enjoyed being on that on that platform back so then. while I was working comfortably by the way uh -huh. um, very young um, you know not worried about a lot of things uh, money was the least of my problems you know <laughs> Well, I was right. I was living the dream, you know. Um, I had quickly climbed up the corporate ladder. Uh, I was any more than the average young South African was earning in those times, mm. you know. And man, I was the perfect example of what a black child should strive to be. Mm. At least, perhaps I thought, you know, and. One day on my way to, to the office, I had taken my car in for service and uh, I bought a newspaper. Now, it was the Star newspaper and I paged through the paper reading. But you see, there's a section of the Star newspaper, like many other newspapers, that a lot of township black people mm. or the less educated persons would care to read. That is the share prices section. Mm. 
I don't know how many people today, back in those days, I, I have not met a lot of people from townships or, you know, from rural areas who would care to, you know, they get to that section of the newspapers like, okay, the newspaper is done. Mm -hmm. So me, because of having, before that company, having worked for a company called NetOne Applied, not NetOne, but before NetOne, um, I had a bridge where, you know, I was a programmer mm -hmm. developing solutions and systems for, 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 for investment houses and fund management companies to be able to decide what share prices to invest in, you know, mm. taking JSE feeds and producing the systems. So obviously, share prices and investment and stocks and stuff like that was a part of my work to have a look at that type of information. And I happened to pay through that and I saw an opportunity for young people mm -hmm. targeting township kids or kids from previously uh, disadvantaged backgrounds. It was a, a nice scholarship mm -hmm. worth a lot of money with a guarantee of a job. And I thought to myself, how many of the targeted young people are actually going to see this advert? You know, you think about it. I mean, number one, I doubt very much if their parents do buy the newspaper. You know, that particular newspaper. And if they do, I doubt very much if they go and look at the boring numbers. They, mm. they because that stuff look, looked boring to me yeah. in those times, yeah, you know. And literally those times, you didn't really much worry because the newspaper would just take for the entertainment you, section. Yeah, you, you were struggling yes. to make men's eat. I mean, to make ends meet, right? So what more now? Why am I going to check out share prices? Mm. And then um, over and above that, um, that, that opportunity would be lost. Pass. The right person wouldn't see it. And I thought, and I started exploring how many more opportunities like this are just going unnoticed, mm. you know, and you find out late. So I said, hmm, let me create a central hub of opportunities. Mm. I verify these opportunities while I'm still working. This is a hobby. This is something I'll do on the site because I don't want to leave my cushy job. Eh? <laughs> and I put that together, um, the content and so forth. And I said, all right, I'll have... A, a website where I'll host all of this stuff. Okay. You know, so that a young person doesn't have to go to multiple websites. So just go to this one website. And back in those days, there wasn't anybody else doing that. Yes. Y you know, uh, nobody was sharing opportunities on social media. So yes, yes. Oh, on Facebook, it was just post your status. Yes. And that's about what it. are you thinking? You understand? So I'd like to, I think at those times, we were the first, if not the first, one of the first to start. Uh, you know, the movement or the habit of sharing opportunities mm -hmm. that we'd come across. Mm -hmm. So I look for opportunities that company, that company, that company, and I just share that information. I built this website and where I put all of the information, I approached YFM and the CEO, Mr. Kenthem Pillay, whom I still have a very good relationship awesome. with to date. Uh, he's no longer with YFM, but uh, we are working on a very interesting project launching at the end of this year. So that's that's going to be incredible. And, um, you know, he gave me a chance. He said, come. Because having a website is not good enough. I knew that. Mm -hmm. Because it's like having a pamphlet, but nobody sees it. But the fact that someone literally saw the potential in it. Absolutely. You know, and I said, we need a radio platform to tell people about the opportunities on which website. On the YDD website. Y you know, so it was a beneficial for both sides. It was beneficial because for both sides. For YFM, for, they for started y looking good. They started looking good because growing up with YFM, YFM is a, it's a mus it's, it's about music, entertainment. It's, it's entertainment, Fun. straight. The, and for this segment to have it on their show was something different, something unique. Nobody and was doing this. No, nobody was you doing were the it. Do That's what I would say. Of this nature. Especially on a show like YFM. Yeah. I mean, it was straight, it's still straight uh, 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 um, entertainment, but this section, to have this platform that you guys created, made YFM now stand out. Yeah. And that's why people would listen, will tune more on to, especially on Saturdays. So they're like, oh, okay, fine, YFM has taken a little bit of a, a different angle, which is fresh to us, which is fresh to young people, because it is a young... Young people are young, worried about their jobs. Yeah. Like, am I going to get a job? Um, I'm looking for a buzzery, I'm looking for an know, internship. So, 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 at the time, I believe that the, comp the competition started mostly between the big brands uh, uh, big radio stations between YFM and other big radio stations which are not allowed to mention um, because now YFM has taken this, situ this, this section to innovate this to take this into lead 
to plant it and to just let it grow. And then what young person that listens to YFM or not just YFM but others that listen to other radio stations now tune into YFM and like Good morning, this is Nayo. You are right here on Wide on Wife and Show. This is what we do. We're talking about why we're talking about lead, we're talking about innovation, we're doing you know all of these type of things. I would run to their station too and advertise my thing. I would also just tune into it for the opportunities because it's a door that you guys has opened. So now the twist that we threw in there. <laughs> Tell me about it. The twist was all right. What is the young person's biggest challenge? One of the big challenges we are encouraging young people to go into entrepreneurship. Uh, and they go in with almost no budget if they're lucky enough they go in with like a shoestring budget which is challenging which is very challenging it is a challenging so thing marketing budget in their planning becomes the least thing that they accommodate so i was like man imagine if we could grant because look on a platform like that it would have cost you for five minutes interview between 9,000 to 8,000 rand. Because of the airtime, like, it's still in today. Right? So I said, look, I brokered a deal with YFM. I said, I'd like to bring in young people that I find innovative, that I believe have a potential to come in on this platform, to come and talk about what they are doing and their business, so that they can get even more exposure and market their business. And I said, I don't want to charge them a cent. I want them to have this for free. It's a leg up. And, and the viewers increase. And the and viewers, viewers increased increase on their side. Today, those young people today, right, who nobody wanted to give a shot, nobody wanted to give an opportunity. Today, one of them made Forbes 30 under 30. Okay. <laughs> you know. And I'm, I'm like seeing a few flash of them coming before. One of them won the Big Break Legacy. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see yeah. <laughs> You know. Uh, one of them made SA what lead hero or mm -hmm. lead hero uh, um, of the, the month. month. Of the month, yeah, the, the, and the, the leadership one. Is endless. And in those times I was not charging any young person any amount. I was like, I'm gonna give you this because we are pushing hard. And today and I often asked myself, because at some point I had to quit my job to do this full time. And that was one of the most painful or the most, mm. you know, taxing yes. periods of my life because there was no income. Wow. You know, I had to... And it's, 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 it's I mean, we know the, how it rolls. That's when the real, in an entrepreneurial... Now you are forced to tap into spaces within you that you never even knew, knew. existed. And, and it, it brings you to, it breaks you with, to a point where it, it makes you actually... First, humble. Mm. It humbles you first. Mm. Before anything else, you have to now, like, it's like you're like this. Let me humble myself. Let and you, more than losing the material possessions, yes. you lose people. And that's, and that's the painful thing about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. I was saying to someone that, actually last night, when I was talking to her, because she's, she's, she's in the beauty industry, and I said to her that... When we grow, we outgrow people. When we, in the space of entrepreneurial, Ed, you lose people because mm. your boat needs to be light. You don't want to carry heavy. That's true. So, because you need to make space for the new level, because who you're going to meet there is not going to be on the same level with the people that you think you can carry with. At the end of the day, you you actually alone basically. You just have acquaintances. That's what, that's what I call more, like I call acquaintances. We see, we see. We don't see, we don't see each other. We greet whatever great stuff. We talk business, and because at the end of the day, in today's growing of entrepreneur, you really are on the pan a panel of just doing things on your own. But you've got acquaintances. You grow. You've got three, four, five brands, and you know you've got these people that you're running with. So with your experience, that literally had, it was, I, 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 I mean, I was in a workspace for about six years, mm. on and off, and I couldn't understand why I'm getting just temp jobs. Mm, mm, mm. And until I had to now finally make the decision, I'm like, let me just take I this. to be deliberate about this. Yes. And it humbles you. I, it, it really does. Look, I'll be frank with you. Um, it's a story for another day. 
that calls around too for this show. You know, it's a story for another day. I learned a lot of valuable lessons. I lost a great deal. I lost everything, you know. And at the same time, Later, I learned I lost everything that didn't matter and gained everything that mattered. Wow. <laughs> you know. So just a quick one to move forward um, yeah. as we close off um, shortly. Um, the importance of innovation. Now, what can you get, 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 get say to the next person, to our viewers, those who give them the, 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 the importance of innovation, because that's what we're talking about. Mm. Because the reason why I brought in, because I know that there's a journey that you went through. So now you're in this space. Yeah. What are the, 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 let's speak to the entrepreneurs. Let's speak to those who want to get into this space. Where do they start? You know, first, I'd like to dispel Mm. The idea that innovation has to always do with technology. Okay. Has to always do with artificial intelligence. Has to always do with um, robotics. Yes, it has everything to do with technology. But that's if you understand what technology means. Mm. You see, at some point, when there were no shoes, or whether there were no zippers, a zipper that you use, mm -hmm. you know, your, to zip up your jacket, to zip yeah. up your pants. When that thing was first introduced, it was technology. Mm -hmm. Today, you don't look at that as technology. technology yes. So also, your idea and your understanding of technology needs to be, you know, more broader and more yes. clearer. Now yes. you start talking to innovation. And why it is important for me to, to really just say, let's broaden innovation. Innovation is not you always integrating Mm. artificial intelligence, robotics, a social media app, and so forth. Yes. Innovation is looking and saying, what is there? Mm. Okay, I see that problem. So, all right, fine. What, can, what is available for me to solve that problem? Right. It's one or two or three items. items yes. But those items were not designed... Yes. For the problem. Yes. How can I manipulate those items to now start catering for that problem? Yeah. It's problem solving. You know, so innovation is a part or a process of problem solving. Yes. You know, the only thing is around innovation is it's you're not necessarily inventing something new. Okay. You're just inventing a new way of using the same old things to solve a problem. problem yes you understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying so hence and and for me that's where innovation from looking at it from that perspective it does make a big difference yes. in my business not only in my business but also in my life yes. companies nowadays you look at the likes of MTN your social your your, your mobile network service yes. providers for how long do you think they can continue making money out of selling airtime. Hmm. Because very few people nowadays are making calls mm. using traditional airtime. Yes. They are now making WhatsApp calls. And before you know it, there'll be Wi-Fi everywhere okay. that I never need to buy airtime. And they look, they're going to lose out on it. So as a mobile network service provider, if your primary means of revenue income within your business was the sale of airtime, do you see that your business in the long run, when Wi-Fi and t internet access is no longer something people have to pay for, but they mm. can get for free, mm. there will be no need for people to transact with you for buying airtime to make a call. So, as a business, now you need to go back and say, I need to innovate in order I can stay in business. Yes. If you don't innovate, you're not going to stay in business. Yes. And nobody is exempt from this. I don't care whether you're a small little business running at the corner mm -hmm. or you're a mega business like the likes of the network service providers I've mentioned. If you do not innovate, hmm. you're going to go out of business. P 
period. So they have to learn to be productive in what they do, but innovate in terms of being creative. It has always happened from the dawn of time. Things have always been changing. changing. Environments have always have been changing. The, the only difference is that the speed at which it is happening today mm. is more rapid than it was before. And this falls so well within, you know, when we start talking about the evolutionary algorithm, mm. you know, or natural selection. Natural selection or evolution is mm. happening much, much more oh. quicker. Wow. You know, if you go and start looking at some of Charles Darwin's work and the wow. studies that he was doing at the Galapagos Islands, yes. you know, it's not about proving whether man was a monkey before. It, it, it's about looking at how he was able to jot down mm. evolution as it happens yes. in environments and what affects it, what makes it tick in a particular way. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be able to predict the future. Okay to be able to prepare for it today. I believe that a, there's, there's a, in your brand, you've got, I've, I've checked your, 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 your timelines and so forth, that there are, there are to the young people, there are, there's, there's, there's programs that you, that you have for them on, on weekdays or weekends, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Please explain us more about those programs because I believe there's a lot of uh, it, it, like give us in, like in a brief of what what are these programs that you have for young people, what are the benefits that they would they would get from this program, how impactful you know because I know that it, it's sourceful it will change their lives because we are now in a point whereby we want our young people to be, mm. you know, growing in their passion. We want people to grow in what they are chosen to do in their purpose and discovering them. So I believe that any person that's listening to this show will be very interested in the programs that you're about to tell us now about what, in, that's part of YD, mm, YD is, YD, right? Yeah. Brand, yes. We've got several programs, but um, I think I will not mention all of them, but right. I will mention the most important Ultimate, ones, yes. which are driven by our 2023 goal. Okay. Our 2023 goal is very clear. We want to create 100,000 jobs by 2023. Awesome. Or not necessarily jobs, uh -huh. but we want to create 100,000, uh, we want to create a means of earning an income mm. for 100,000 young people in okay. South Africa. Now, you see, I'm specifically saying not jobs. Jobs, yes. Because jobs are not guaranteed. We don't know. Mm. But the one thing that is always guaranteed, there's always a problem to solve. Yes. There's always work to be done. Yes. It's just figuring out how to earn an income from doing that work. Okay. So we have tested that model. We've tried it out. And it works. Wow. So we will be rolling it out as of the end of this year. We'll be, we will be taking... A few young people, a couple of young people will start it very small, right. but it's going to grow rapidly. And concurrently at the same time, our big goal also for 2023 is to create 100 digital millionaires. Hmm. Right. So in this program, they go through the process they of... They go through training. To go through so training. We, are, we it, will be training right. young people on artificial intelligence, robotics cognitive <laughs> automation because we are in recognition of the fourth industrial revolution mm. jobs are falling away they are because everyone wants to do their own thing now machines are taking over robots are taking over. you go to a mcdonald's right now a cashier is not going to serve you at a couple of mcdonald's you just go up to a kiosk you tell the order that you want you swipe there it tells you your order will be ready at such and such time and then you go to the counter to pick up your your, your food or a waiter brings your food to you but it's only a matter of time there are already robots uh, 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 mobile yeah. units that are able to deliver food to you so how many cashiers jobs will be going wow you understand what i'm saying we are seeing this in this day and age so we are going to shed a good five million jobs however at the same time we are going to see a boom in new types of jobs so in as much as jobs are falling away mm -hmm. A new type of job that requires a new type of skills set will be there. Mm -hmm. So we are running ahead of institutions and governments. And we are saying, 
we are preparing youth today so currently in our program we are running our pilot program it's in its second month right now okay where we are training young people on skills ai robotics cognitive automation and so okay. forth of skills of the present future well mr nail i hate to cut this short this this but this 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 is this is a a story for another day. This this calls for round two because we are in we are in the world in the in this in the cycle now. We like you just explained that everything is now going to be not handled by humans now. It's going to be handled by technology, and it's it's moving so fast that you don't know whether you're coming or going. So in closing off, um, I would like to thank you for coming on to Divine Human Empowerment Inspirational mm -hmm. Talk right here on Global Conference Television. Is there any um, encouragement words that you would like to say to the entrepreneurs and like we spoke about innovation, you know, to, to in, in that of terms of they now know that they need to move the time exactly ahead of time and be creative about it because every day things do change. So those who are in, in, in the entrepreneurial environment, mm -hmm. those who are now understanding now the importance of innovation, what is the most important advice in one sentence that you can give them? The difference between where you want to be mm -hmm. and where you are today is the things that you don't know. There you have it, viewers. We've got Mr. Neo, I am not even going to try and pronounce the surname, but I'm going to try and say is wow. wow. There we go. <laughs> He's actually trying to help me on it. <laughs> but yes, um, this has been a very inspirational talk about innovation, the importance of innovation, and the importance of also about moving with time. Because in today's life, literally, we have, we, 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 we literally have now technology taking over. So I hope that you have listened well and you have learned from this, you have learned from Nao. He also has great um, groups that he has and a great um, groups that he has that his uh, programs basically actually wanted to say, excuse me, for young people. And that will prepare you also to get into entrepreneurial, to get into innovation and anything that you desire to do. Thank you so much. For joining me, your host, Carol Lodomuslari, right here on Divine Human Empowerment Inspirational Talk on our favorite channel, Global Conference Television. Until next time, remain blessed. Thank you.